Well, when most of us think superchargers, we kind of remember back to our high school days and what used to go under the hood, much less what was in our aircraft. But you're doing something truly unique and, shall, shall we say it, revolutionary with the SR-22, and that you've supercharged a critter. How the heck did you do it? Well, it really did come from, like you said, when we were kids. I'm a California boy from back in the 50s, and I just thought, you know, it would be nice to do something a little different in aviation, basically something that's hot rotting. And uh, try to make something that isn't competing with the turbo, but has some potential for development and, and potential to give a, a real bang for the buck, be lightweight and durable, and something new and different. When we talk about conventional supercharging, Let's, let's get back to the basics. What do we mean by supercharging? What is a supercharger, especially as it applies to this modification for the SR-22? The supercharger is just a way of compressing the air to give the engine more power, but in the case of aircraft, to actually just maintain that same power to a higher level uh, of altitude. As the power starts to drop off an airplane, performance starts to drop off, that makes it difficult to take off uh, from high altitude airports, to, to climb and to uh, cross over the mountains. And the supercharger is just compressing that air and giving a little bit better performance to that airplane to make those jobs easier. How does supercharging then differentiate itself from turbocharging? Turbochargers are a real good way to make a lot of horsepower, but turbochargers are driven by the exhaust gas. And the exhaust drives uh, a turbine that turns an impeller that compresses the charge. Those the engines tend to run quite hot because they are in fact driven by exhaust. The supercharger, the centrifugal supercharger, is simply the compressor half of the turbocharger. And by running it slower and using a, a lower boost, we've been able to run cooler temperatures and give a lighter weight performance advantage uh, to a plane that doesn't need to fly at 25,000 feet. What does this mean to the SR-22? What kind of capabilities do I get from supercharging it? This supercharger will provide sea level horsepower to about 7,000 feet. At 7,000 feet, the power will start to drop off because it's mechanically driven. It's not going to turn any faster as it goes higher. It's mechanically driven. So at 7,000 feet, the power will start dropping off as if 7,000 feet were sea level. So 10,000 feet is like 3,000, 12,000 is like 5,000. That makes everything down below you in the mountains 7,000 feet lower. And that's really what it's made for, the person that wants to get up and fly into those altitudes. Uh, but does it need to go up to the, to the end of the flight levels like the turbo guys do? Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. What's, what's the downside of a supercharger? What is it that we, what does it cost us to get that kind of performance? Well, the downside of the supercharger, I would say, is that you're simply not going to have those kind of performances in the 20,000 feet and higher altitudes. I mean, that really is the domain of the turbo. The upside of it is this, this system weighs about a third of what the turbo weighs. It also costs about half of what a turbo costs. And we think they're going to run four or 5,000 hours, whereas, as, as you know, turbos tend to need overhauling at 800 to 1,000. What kind of complexity does this bring to the system from an operational standpoint? If I'm flying along and I've got a supercharger in the airplane, what's different in how I operate my airplane? Not too much. We've gone ahead and incorporated uh, an electromagnetic uh, valve downstream of the supercharger that reads manifold pressure and will not allow that manifold pressure to exceed 29.6 inches. So you still have your full single throttle operation. You can push it full forward. That valve is not uh, affected by uh, engine oil temperatures like in turbos or, or the outside temperature. It's good for about 50 below to about 250 above. So within two seconds that valve will, will get your manifold pressure that you want and maintain it right on up to, uh, up to altitude. What's the retrofit uh, mean in terms of uh, downtime, cost, uh, and so forth? Well, this, like I said, this system is quite a bit cheaper than the, super, uh, the turbocharger. It's uh, $36,300 installed and it takes five days to put it on. Sometimes it takes less, but five days is plenty of time to install this system. It's just a, a pretty bolt-on, uh, straightforward system. We did a lot of work to try to make sure it would go on easily. Uh, and you indicated that it, it carried much less weight penalty? Yeah, this system weighs 39 and a half pounds for the entire system. 
Um, about 29 and a half of that is between the baffle and the firewall. So it's very you know, close to the, uh, to the passenger compartment to try and keep those CGs in line. And that's, uh, that's really part of the problem with, with the turbocharger also, it's so much weight out in the front. So uh, keeping up useful load and keeping the CG in a useful spot is, was part of our target here and I think we accomplished it. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. Let me add one other question to this. Since we're not making uh, per se that much more heat, not adding a tremendous amount of complexity to it, not asking the, the engine to do anything beyond what it's normally certified for in regards to you know, manifold pressures and all, I would assume then it really shouldn't be affecting the longevity of our engines that much either. Well, it shouldn't be, you know, and we've, we warranty this to six years at 1,800 hours for all of our parts, and uh, we haven't had any trouble uh, keeping up with that kind of warranty. Um, we have not had a single cylinder problem on any of our, even our Cessnas that go back, uh, you know, four or five years. And uh, here again, I think that's because of the, the lower boost and the lower temperatures. You can actually put your hand right on the supercharger when it's running full speed. Uh, in the wintertime, it feels good. In the summertime, it feels a little bit hot. Uh, but it simply doesn't run that hot. And, and of course, heat is the enemy uh, uh, in an engine. To the person looking and making a decision to this, what is what is the true mission that this performs? Is this, is, is this simply a way of cheating density altitude, especially for those of us who are dealing with really hot Florida days, or is there something beyond that that we should all be looking for? Well, I think cheating density altitude is a real good way to put this. If you look at the actual FAA uh, data for the turbo and the normally aspirated and the supercharged plane, you'll see that the supercharged plane will outclimb uh, even the turbo to 12,000 feet by a, a full minute. So this is one of the things this really does well, is hot days, heavy loads, and, and good takeoff performance and climb. And that's, I think, probably is the strongest point, on top, plus the additional speed you get at altitude from the additional power.